These poems are dedicated to all those whose lives have been spent in bringing peace to this planet. Wherever you are, I bow my head. May peace be on this earth. We are all united with the thread of love. May each one of us realize the garland of life. bliss. The definition of bliss is as follows. Now, perfect happiness, great joy. Similar, joy, pleasure, delight, happiness, ecstasy, elation, <coughs> euphoria, heaven, paradise, Seventh heaven, <coughs> cloud down, utopia, Eden, the top of the world. These are all states of mind. We all have these moments in our lives. Most of the time, they are fleeting. They come and go like a thief in the night. Yet this is your true state of existence. <laughs> if that's true, what happened? Why are we so angry and frustrated? That's a question you must ask. Are you totally satisfied with your current state of mind? Feet on the ground. The Kabbalists say the following. Have your feet on the ground and have your head in heaven. The Buddhists say combine wisdom and bliss into your daily actions. Both of them are talking about the same thing. They just have a different way to express it. To truly have your feet on the ground, one must be in bliss and wisdom. Present day society is not grounded properly. <clears throat> we have so much unconscious emotional baggage that we hold on to. We don't live in the present moment. We have a tendency to live in the past and fear the future. Mind you, this is not our true nature. <clears throat> our lives are driven by our subconscious minds, yet we think we are aware. Because of this, in each and every moment, we play the same unconscious tapes over and over again. When one says, you are the universe, the subconscious mind rolls its eyes and mocks the other person. At this moment in time, you have existing hardware and software that can't see the forest from the trees. One must want to learn how to rebuild the hardware, software, and operating system. Remember, it's by your will alone you set your mind in motion. This path towards the light is a conscious path you must be aware in each and every moment. Does this make any sense? The kingdom of heaven exists inside of you. 
Are you consciously aware of it in this present moment? Don't wait until you die like the majority of people do. You were born to discover the jewel within you. One who solves this puzzle has his feet on the ground and his head in heaven. Interconnectedness and bliss. The definition of interconnectedness is as follows. Now, the state of being connected with each other, the interconnectedness of all things in the universe. In my eyes, the Buddhists were the quantum scientists of their day. Years before Christ, their foundation of truth was built upon the interconnectedness of all things in the universe. This, my friend, was not a theory, but a practical experience. The ancient yogis have the expression of sat shit anand. Truth is the consciousness of bliss. The entire universe is alive and conscious. Many modern day quantum scientists <coughs> support this. There will soon be the day that science and mystics will be on the same wavelength. We are getting ever so close. How incredible it would be for a scientist to have a theory and go inside the inner laboratory and perform the test? This is not out of the question. <coughs> the mystics have done this for thousands of years. We are at the beginning of a new dawn for mankind. For the majority of humankind has the will and desire to discover the jewel within. This earth will transform. Someday in the future we will see what a wild roller coaster ride we were on. Mankind will see <coughs> the threat of love tying us all together. That, my friend, will be a glorious day. When humanity realizes that the source of all has always been there, yet we've been too busy with texting on the freeway of life. We couldn't see the forest from the trees. Mankind will learn to slow down and see his true nature. It's been there all the time. The well of bliss is inside of you. The well of bliss is inside of you. Why do you have parched lips and die of thirst? How can a fish drown in water? This world is a desert. It will never completely fill you up. External happiness is fleeting. It comes and goes in an instant. We are grasping at straws in life. We see only 1% of the light spectrum, yet we think we have perfect vision. 
This universe is singing to you a glorious song. <clears throat> we are too busy texting on the freeway of life. In our society, the more you do is a badge of honor. E even <clears throat> if you burn out working 80 hours a week, you proudly proclaim your loyalty to your company. Your company could care less when it comes to layoffs. Everyone <coughs> is fair game. Everyone asks, what do you do? Instead of, have you found the jewel inside of you? This is the most important thing in life. Our society doesn't like a person who slows down and smells the flowers of life. You are considered an outcast. Common sense is uncommon. It seems each day we are losing our balance and falling down into a state of chaos and confusion. And this pandemic will be around for a while. We are bickering and arguing. Yet the virus morphs and changes into something more powerful. The more we fight with each other, the more powerful it will get. Each one of us must cultivate internal wisdom. The problem is most people just roll their eyes when they hear that. Humanity is living in a state of apathy, yet billions of people are waking up from their slumber. The answer exists inside of you. Unshakable bliss. What in the world is unshakable bliss? Unshakable bliss is when one lives in the center of the hurricane constantly. That is the goal. We have all been in the center of the hurricane. Yet the majority of the time, we are like leaves blowing in the wind. Due to our minds focused solely on the external world, this is the predicament we are in. The center of the hurricane exists inside of you. Yet if you focus your life solely externally, one doesn't know how to center oneself in the hurricane of life. It's as simple as that. We were never taught this in schools. I was fortunate. In 1971, <coughs> my high school had a month-long yoga class as an elective. This jump-started an incredible journey in life. Incredible wisdom is all around you. With the advent of the internet, <coughs> sacred wisdom is there or the asking. It's up to you to follow up and practice. You can't change your life without practicing wisdom. This is a practical journey. It's a moment by moment affair. It's probably the most practical thing you can do. Bliss is probably one of the foundations of life. <coughs> it is your true essence. Somehow, along the way, we lost sight of it. Today, many people are fueled with anger and intolerance. They think this is a normal state of awareness. Granted, this awareness has been on the planet Earth for thousands of years. Yet, it's not our true essence. Are you motivated to discover your true nature? Or have you decided 
to sit this one out and just carry on with your usual patterns in life. The choice is yours. Harmony and Bliss When your life is in harmony, you will be in bliss. They are two sides of the coin. You can't have one without the other. They are part of the same package. One can't connect to harmony without first being connected within. One can't connect to bliss without first being connected within. If we were taught to focus only externally, that is why the world is so chaotic. Many people only think along party lines, even if they know the party is not telling the truth. This has a cascading effect. The more we lie and call it the truth, the further we get from harmony and bliss. We get to the point where the only emotions we express are anger and intolerance towards others. <laughs> we can only see our side of the picture. Harmony includes all. It doesn't say I'm right and you are wrong. A person who's in harmony just smiles at life. He has <laughs> nothing <coughs> to prove. He doesn't even try to convince you. Harmony is beyond convincing somebody. It is a state of mind. Harmony and bliss can be cultivated just like planting a garden. This is an inner garden. The same care is taken, has taken, <laughs> taken care of an external garden. I'm talking about something as real as it can be. I'm talking about your true nature. You are magnificent. The clouds or darkness are simply hiding your inner light. It just takes your will and conviction to wake up from your slumber. That's all it takes. Day by day, small baby steps is taken. You don't need to leap to the other side. This is a practical path. Just watch your breath in each moment. You can solve this puzzle. Practical Bliss What is Practical Bliss? Practical Bliss is bliss combined with wisdom. If someone is very narrow-minded and tries to convince you and starts an argument, Practical Bliss contains the wisdom of seeing and realizing the situation and simply smiles. There's no point in saying any words when someone is narrow-minded. This person won't listen to a word you are saying. Consequently, don't put gasoline on the fire. Practical bliss allows a person to see where the other person is coming from. Intuition is highly developed. The mind and the heart are balanced. 
this person won't try to change you or convert you. <coughs> he has nothing to hide. <coughs> yes, he still has his baggage he is carrying. Mind you, he has dropped it ever so much. Life is glorious, a practical bliss. In each moment, one can tap into this state of awareness. It's not for the chosen few. It exists the inside of everyone, including you. <coughs> yes, curveball still will be thrown your way. That's called life. Yet one cannot be rattled by them. One who is centered and calm is more likely to hit the ball. As I said, <coughs> discovering the bliss within is the most practical thing you can do. Most of the time we think we are alone on this journey in life. Practical bliss reveals we are never alone. We are all interconnected with each other. Due to our lack of awareness, the world is in such chaos. We don't think we are responsible for it. We blame blame others for the mess we are in. Party versus far party, race versus race, country versus country. We are wearing blinders, yet we think we are seen properly. imagination and bliss. When we were young, all of us lived in a state of bliss. Between the ages of zero to seven, the mind is in theta. Theta is the borderline between conscious and subconscious. Kids have a great tendency to daydream and to have great states of imagination. Yet at some point in time, most parents tell their kids to stop daydreaming. Johnny, their head is in the clouds. Over time, we focus all our attention externally. <coughs> that, this is our current predicament. Imagination and dreaming help rewire the neural circuits. If you don't have the neural circuits to experience bliss, how do you expect to experience this state of awareness? Again, I'm going to say, the spiritual path is the most practical path. One needs to rewire the hardware, software, and operating system to discover the jewel within. This path is a conscious path. It involves your will and awareness. Dear old Albert Einstein tributes his success upon his dream and imagination. True wisdom and knowledge exist in that state of mind. The universe will give you secrets using your rational mind. Only by entering the subconscious mind can one discover the secrets of life. We must as a society rediscover the innocence of a child. Currently, the world is in chaos. People are daily flaming each other. We are adding more gasoline to the fire of life. We think this is normal. Many people think this is life as it is. We then hold on to our beliefs for dear life. If someone has a different belief than you, most people will flame the other person. There is another state of being. It lies inside of you.
imagination and bliss too. The Buddhas are supreme experts at using imagination in their daily practice. Imagine having a daily practice where you combine imagery and deep silence. By imaging something, a person is rewiring the brain and neural circuits. In order for a person to change, this must be done. An idle person is unaware of this. They simply go through daily motions without being aware of most actions they take come from the subconscious mind. Positive, mindful imaginations during one's practice is the key. We must realize the importance of daily rewiring our brains. This must be conscious. Being conscious is the key. We can constantly learn how to fine tune the guitar of life. Yes, this takes effort. Yes, we all have different ways to do this. The main key is whatever method you use, do it daily. Over time, your imagination will be an integral part of you. One will see imagination is your best friend. We have been held back by society's norms. Johnny, stop your imagination and daydreaming. We were told this constantly when we were young. To fit in, we did this hook, line, and sinker. Consequently, we lost sight of our true essence. This is the state of the world today. We must all encourage each other. It seems like the world at large is in a stupor. Chaos is all around. <laughs> Many people are numb when it comes to life. I hope you might take this message to heart. You are magnificent. This is your true state of being. Bliss and health. What does bliss have to do with health? In my eyes, in everything. A blissful state of mind and a blissful body leads to exceptional health. An angry mind can lead to cancer. Cancer is angry cells gone rampant. One who tries to be in harmony in life develops intuition. Intuition is the key to fine-tune the guitar of life. Most people don't believe in preventative medicine. Consequently, our medical system is disease-based. I saw on TV a few years ago, a pharmaceutical CEO said that making profits is the name of the game. His goal wasn't to heal you, but to have you as a lifetime customer. Even during this pandemic, the media isn't talking about preventative measures of getting COVID. They go as far as wearing a mask, social distancing, and getting the vaccine. Yet this is just scratching the surface. I once had a job writing a software for the, for the heart procedures for surgeons. I asked the CEO, why don't they don't promote preventative medicine? He looked at me and glared. Nobody wants to take any responsibility. The patient expects us to heal them without changing their lifestyles. The United States is a leader in sick-based medical care. Yes, there are exceptions. My brother and I have been practicing preventative medicine for 50 years now. We are still fine-tuning this guitar. One has to always morph and grow 
into greater wisdom. A person who is stagnating about his health will definitely deteriorate faster than one who is consciously involved in maintaining excellent health. Your lifestyle determines your health. The body can heal itself. You can reprogram the operating system, hardware, and software. Granted, you must take action. Currently, most of humanity is living on remote control. The disease comes when the body and mind are not at ease. Only you can fix that. Your medicines only take away the symptoms. They won't take away the root cause. Your lifestyle created this. You can change for the better.